It's the conversation that ends friendships and saves lives. This is episode five of the study, and the title of this podcast is Why Vegan? Go to www.darknightrecords.com, listen to and download all previous episodes of the study, and get updates on uh, relevant links to the topics discussed in each episode. Uh, Don't forget to hit up the CD and MP3 store while you're there. Why vegan? Uh, Ethics, the environment, your health, whatever the reason for the discussion that you're going to participate in. We're going to try to have the vegan conversation from different chairs at a table in a short amount of time. Not to solve the great dilemma or convert anybody in one way or another, but to open up and expand the conversation without the uncomfortable feelings that can sometimes come with having these conversations while at a get together with like a table covered in steaks and chops. So we're going to be talking perspective, culture, upbringing, health, the animals, the environment, how we identify as earthlings, whether superior species, human, an American, an omnivore, an aware person, a vegan, a vessel, a time traveler, a space traveler, stardust, etc. Vegan tea, um, obviously. Uh, we're going to talk about vegans with compassion deficiencies, and we're going to spend several moments on the topic of did you know? Um Because the reality is a lot of vegans can, you know what I mean, be like all other kinds of people. They can be a little bit on the asshole side sometimes. Uh, Going back real quick to episode four, uh, let's talk about porn. It's that simple. If you have teens or at-risk youth in your life and you can define at-risk whatever way you like. And you're interested in preventing and avoiding future generations of young men trying to pick up women using tactics and pick up lines they learn watching porn videos. If you're interested in preventing and avoiding future generations of young women raised by softcore porn in the form of desperately and commercially sexualized musicians, fitness icons, actresses, media icons who depend on wow factor to keep up an attractive and attractive and lucrative appearance that would fall apart overnight with a bad enough car crash or future generations of uh, fucking and getting pussy as priority number one education and rational thinking priority number w resulting in often uh in unplanned and unwanted pregnancy bringing in a victim of lifelong parent fails in the form of statements like man up tools like child leashes and i could go on all fucking day if you're interested in people in the future uh the people who will populate the world of your children's children making less messes in the form of human misery and suffering resulting from the missing out on life in the endless quest and never-ending hunt for some good crotch while living a lie and not a life Uh, Let's talk about porn with our young ones. I do it for my godsons who are old enough that this is an issue that they shouldn't be surprised to come up again in conversation at this point in our discussions, in our relationships. Um, It's not that hard to bring up and you don't have to spring it on them and make them uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Just next time you're with them discussing the problems that concern you the most regarding uh, misleading information reaching young minds more easily with the advent of mobile devices with web browsers and social media apps. Uh, list several things, list a lot of shit like porn and other stuff and ask them what they understand about all the topics, not just one, you know, anyway. So why vegan? Episode five. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Not tuning out yet. Um, why vegan? Why not vegan? We're going to talk about both. Um, there was a time before I learned things like, uh, learn more about what the satisfying of the demand for meat and eggs and dairy is doing to our planet, to our water, to our air, to our health. No matter your religion, uh, nationality, political, gender, identification, uh, whatever. Before I learn more about the effects of a single species that clings to drinking milk beyond infancy, before I learn more about what is common practice in factory and free range farms and what they cost, uh, what is the environmental, the water footprint, all that. Um, There was a time when I was a seven and a half dozen pack of eggs kind of guy who ate meat at least once uh, per day. Uh, with with a meal. I thought that by avoiding fast food, I was doing my part in not supporting animal cruelty, environmental destruction, and no and uh, low quality foods. I thought of vegan foods as strange and hard to imagine eating while thinking of body parts as a part of a normal and healthy diet. Um, perspective is the main thing, you know, that that vegans talk about and people shifting, not changing who they are, just changing the way they see. Um, 
all living things. Um, I thought very little about how I felt about my role as an earthling overall and even less uh, thought toward compassion for other forms of life. I didn't ask the questions that lead to new and uncomfortable information about an unnecessary practice to satisfy a cultural and unsustainable food preference at the expense of critical and tangible natural resources necessary to s sustain life on earth. And I'm not really sure why. Uh, maybe I didn't care. Maybe I hadn't acquired the reasons necessary for me to care. Uh, or was it that I felt like we were circling the drain anyways and uh, all this with all this endless war, mindless consumption, Black Fridays, white privileges, uh, brown tap water and nothing fucking matters anyway. So what the hell? I'm just going to do whatever the fuck. And, you know, you don't like it. Eat a bag of dictionary for the appropriate word here. Uh, never mind. Maybe I knew deep down that I was afraid to learn how complicit I was in a practice that is unethical by its nature or cruel by design and unsustainable and obsolete and above all not necessary in any way to pass on to our children and generations to come. Um, little disclaimer here before we go any further. I'm not vegan. I don't see myself ever, ever fully joining or ever being a joiner, you know, like uh, I've never, that's never really been my thing. I'm, I'm very flexible and, uh, and I practice leaning towards things that I support more and more over the years. Like, uh, you know, being vegan means all life. I kill mosquitoes, fuck them, zero compassion. I kill roaches, fuck them, no compassion. I don't know enough about spiders to be able to trust them like that inside my home. So squash, you know, outside we're good, we're neighbors, I catch and release mice, grasshoppers, moths, bees, and other non-threatening species from my home, I hate seeing food, as I learn to call these things go to waste, so I tend to eat things that I wouldn't otherwise choose for myself, or, uh, or shop for, but I'm weaning myself off that habit too, like finishing some, you know, some of the kids in my life, my, you know, my young ones, leftovers you know weaning myself off that habit i'm not throwing away perfectly functioning shoes just because they have leather in them i'm gonna wear them out i'm gonna let them wear out and get new ones maybe more appropriate to my new way of thinking you know what i mean by the way apparently one could eat a diet of oreos corn pops chocolate syrup cocoa puffs skittles fruit loops rich crackers frosted flakes fritos sour patches bisquick uh, and Big League Chew, and technically they're eating a vegan diet, but they're going to fucking die. That shit's gross. So vegan is more complex than no meat, than no eggs, no dairy. Um, so uh, let's start with the tough questions. Um, how did we, human beings, start, begin meeting, uh, eating meat anyway? Um, I've heard that Homo habilis faced a drought about two and a half million years ago and was forced into a meat diet, including bone marrow, which furthered brain growth. Later, uh, between approximately 80 to 60,000 years ago, uh, shellfish came into the diet um, for Homo sapien and out of this necessity to survive and lack of access, you know, it again spurred further brain growth. So it did serve its purpose. It did a lot for us um, at a time where we turned to new alternatives because of the way of life according to you know these these records this evidence that these scientists be talking about you know it was not it was not suitable for sustaining life we had to go on the hunt uh, don't get me started on hunting uh, but no matter how it began no matter how it began whether or not that's true how much of that is true it's not us today um, it's not us today it's not necessary and don't get me started on hunting. Like I said, hunting is not a pleasure-oriented uh, choice. It's a chosen method of survival. You know what I mean? That's hunting. Uh, shooting something for pleasure, that's something different. That's killing. And let it be known, not all who relied on hunting as their method of survival survive. It's harsh as hell, and it's not a reality show about islands surviving for network profits. Hunting is, um, let me see. As it's known today, I guess you could say, is making the choice to kill a member of another species because we wouldn't call call it hunting if it were a human. We more likely call it murder or cannibalism. Uh, hunting another species for food or pleasure or both. Um, I use the word pleasure because you know my reason and logic won't allow me to call it sport. I fail to see the sportsmanship in it. Um, I don't know anyone who would willingly participate in a sport where, with no weapon or body armor, they face a sneak attack by a gunman with sometimes long-range weaponry. You know what I mean? Do you? Do you know anybody? Um, 
Joe Rogan, speaking of, uh, you know, hunting, he not that long ago posted about his hunt by arrow of some animal. I forget what kind of deer or elk. I don't know. Um, I thought it might actually have been sport like if he used his MMA skills and beat the animal to death or choked it out. You know, shooting an animal with a bow and arrow is no more or no less cowardly than a drone strike in principle. In principle, the degree in bloodshed and death is vastly different, obviously, but an unfair advantage is an unfair advantage. The skilled tactical use of a weapon against the unarmed and un, uh, unexpecting is, uh, is just that, you know, an easy kill. An easy kill is an easy kill, not a hunt. Uh, let's be honest. Uh, let's talk about our culture. Let's talk about upbringing because, you know, we're all products of our environment and culture. We learn shit because it was around when we were learning. Um, coming from a whatever you want to call it, Latino, Hispanic upbringing with parents who identify, you know, a certain way. Um, man, when it was, when was there not milk or meat or cheese and combinations of all of them, man? Like, there was even like, Pasta de hígado, there was liver paste, there was carne asada, salteñas, milk, eggs, ham and cheese, you name it. My diet reflects my upbringing and culture, same as yours. The frame of reference from which I have to draw from based on my life experiences, uh, things that I have and have not had, you know, a person never familiarized with Ethiopian food, for example, has no physical reference for considering or craving Ethiopian cuisine. Um, they can't think of that. For the things that may make up their diversity of thought when it comes to what they consider to be food, you know, um, so having compassion for our brainwashing and miseducation is key. And often something even vegans lack. You know, I talked about, or, you know, before we're going to talk about vegans with a compassion deficiency. Uh, I forgot how I worded it. But we are, every one of us, shaped by our environment. Um, and if you don't understand that, ask yourself, why is it that you don't eat a strict diet consisting of foods only found in the Republic of Cuba during the embargo, for example? And why did, and why some did? Why do you eat what you eat and not what was native to, for example, Cuba? Was it because you gave that diet a try and decided that based on weeks and years of experience and trial that it had it just didn't work out for you and you would move on uh, to where you currently uh, reside, where you live in search of a diet that more closely resembles your ideal diet based upon hard evidence gathered from lengthy extensive travel? Or was it because you weren't born there or Pakistan or Japan or Germany or hundreds of other places and you were fed what was accessible and affordable to and by those who raised you? And if you really think that your diet is a result of strict and rigid choices and not the environment, you're not even listening to this podcast anymore. A mind like that more than likely tuned out already. Um, going against friends and family by becoming vegan can be the scariest thing about adopting any part of a vegan lifestyle and there are many examples I don't have time to discuss but I guess in general depending on your friends and family to be core supporters of any lifestyle choice of yours may be advocating that may be advocating change is uh, of sorts as high risk and low result you're better off learning first how to talk to people with very different points of view than your own even before engaging in that type of conversation with someone you plan to see at a get together you know learn how to come at people uh, when to leave people be etc before discussing things like veganism or social change with friends and family you know myself included it goes for everybody um, it can be too much to deal with the whole thought of conversion about you know stepping outside the norm of what we've been taught is food it can be too much to deal with going against the diet your parents instilled in you and for those of us with living parents are likely to still you know be serving and offering when you see them um it can be heartbreaking and confusing uh on one or both ends if not thought out and approached with the highest compaction and maximum courtesy that's a phrase i learned from fresco maximum courtesy i feel like the thought of living that drastically different than more than likely most if not all of your circle of few are not vegans in some cases extremely is a thought too disturbing for most to accept you know what i mean it's way too outside the box all the get-togethers, the restaurants, all the cookouts, all the bar foods, holiday meals. Fucking forget it if you're dating, man. The amount of shit that can go wrong on a date between a vegan and non-vegan that are... Man, that's that's a four-part extended series of podcasts with extras, so let's not even. Um, can you imagine the thought of breaking your mother's heart? You know, telling her, sorry, mom, not eating these things you make for me. 
anymore you know that alone seems to me like more than enough to keep people tragically far away from uh, from the fence of you know converting to veganism um then there's rationalizing let's talk about rationalizing uh we'll come back to the excuses later but for now you know i'm going to say that and i'm only speculating here i'm going to say that uh it appears to me that one of the most powerful reasons not to be compelled to go vegan would be an apparent unwillingness to cause any sort of serious disturbance in their accepted culture and the people that they have accepted as friends and family i think we're you know disturbing that close circle it's just it's way too risky for us it's you know it's not worth it and people stay far away from the fence as a result you know making exceptions as i said um i make many i eat mostly vegan or vegetarian foods for now you know what can i do take baby steps um what not to do with family you know you gotta we gotta you know maximum courtesy like i said how to deal with people you know is the culture in need of change updating you know it might not be what's wrong with you you know what's wrong with us what's wrong with me no it's what's accessible to us it's out of our hands like nobody who's alive today is responsible for what is and what isn't available in the grocery store you know so it's not really what's wrong with you what's wrong with carnivores what's wrong with meat eaters what's wrong with you know people who support the dairy it's what's wrong with the the shit that's that makes it to our shelves that's stocked to capacity what's wrong with the options that are presented to us you know is that is that something that we should discuss and and leave our fellow man alone you know you know don't give your your friends and family a hard time talk about the system um vegan assholes we're going to talk about vegan assholes for a little bit compassion that's something that the more i've studied about vegan lifestyle uh keeps coming up is compassion you have to be compassionate for your fellow species not just human beings so the fact that people will run up on a total stranger with a camera in their face saying you know here we have the first fur hag of the season you know and like telling them you know so why is it okay for you to skin an animal like you saw this you see this person wearing a coat you didn't see them skinning an animal you didn't don't you can't make those wild accusations and emotional accusations you got to come at people correct you know excuse me you know i want to talk to you about you know compassion and and equality on this planet do you have a minute like you know are you aware that 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 this business here you know is uh unfortunately supports cruel and you know unusual practice towards animals you know are you interested in learning more no i'm not interested all right you know well you know have a nice day take this and you know i hope you'll think about it you know there's there's a way to approach people you know you can't go out in the streets and to a total stranger be like you know so why is it okay for you to kill animals like i saw you know like i, I mentioned this fur hag thing this is guy there's there's several people that i catch on instagram with uh with the the vegan support you know uh motto and that narrative but Honestly, man, there's some straight up assholes because like you run up on somebody saying stuff like that, calling somebody a fur hag, saying, why is it okay for you to kill? Like, you don't know this person. Like, you know, for for uh, someone who claims to have compassion for living people, living beings, like, you know, what I mean, you're looking at one, you know, so you, you can't run up on people with cameras in their faces. You got to have more tact than that. I would tell you the same thing. I would tell you like in another video, dude was like, you you know, you want to go fuck yourself. I would, I would tell you the same thing. If you didn't come at me proper, like you're not even ready to have the conversation. You're not ready. You're just ready to, to tell me what you think is wrong with me and everybody who you think is like me. You know what I mean? And you've done no research on me. You can go fuck yourself. Being a vegan doesn't mean you acquire effective communication skills or maturity or behavioral sciences degree. And it reflects in many people, vegan and not, you know, so you got to you got to think about how you approach people piggybacking on social media like the right on. Yeah, you know, you know, good post, all that shit, supporting ass white behavior and trying to sell it as vegan compassion. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying that's pretty selective compassion there. Uh, moving along with episode five, uh, we're gonna get to the the real butt hurt of uh, of the episode. So if uh, if you're still with me, you know, hang on tight. So um, one of the main things these days that shifts people in the direction of veganism is this documentary called Conspiracy. I mean, I gotta admit, when I saw that shit, and I learned more than just you know the health aspect you learn about the environmental aspect and how everyone is tied to it and how like even people who are vegans 
through i forgot how they discuss it in the movie through like uh taxes are and they end up paying for the animal agricultural industry you know they they're a part of their taxes so even if you're a vegan some of your money goes to it you know vegans don't talk about that so like it's it's just the the presentation i think was really well done so we're going to talk about some things uh from the movie um and it's okay it's okay it's time for a little butthurt but it's all right because we're going to be talking about our environment here and i think we can all agree that it's a bad idea to keep fucking up the planet the way we are because I've heard of no scientific prediction of the future stating that our current levels of consumption of resources, uh, levels of production of animal agriculture, uh, our fossil fuel addiction, etc., will result in a sustainable model for the continuation, preservation, or evolution of the human race and all our things alike. I've heard no prediction like that. Still waiting for it. Cowspiracy's website apparently has a place you can go to to get info on their stats, on the data that's in the movie. Uh, and there's even a video on YouTube titled Cowspiracy is Bull by this guy named Mike the Vegan, breaking down whether or not Cowspiracy is Bull. Uh, spoiler alert, looks like the numbers are pretty reliable. So here we go. From the movie Cowspiracy, if you haven't seen it, I recommend you do go to cowspiracy.com, yada, yada, yada. Um, let's start with... Uh, the fact that, did you know? Let's start with, uh, we talked about earlier, did you know? Uh, did you know that one, apparently one acre of rainforest per second is cut down for grazing animals to use as products? Uh, did you know it's estimated uh, close to about 100 plant, animal, and insect species go extinct due to rainforest destruction? Um, did you know 116,000 pounds of animal farm excrement? That is cow shit and the rest it is produced every second 116,000 pounds every second in the united states alone enough to cover uh, we won't even get into that uh did you know there are about 500 nitrogen flooded dead zones in the u.s alone i wouldn't have even been able to put that sentence together before and it matters it matters you know 500 nitrogen flooded dead zones in the united states alone adding up to about 95,000 square miles of areas devoid of life. Uh, did you know that massive dragnet fishing captures about uh, up to five pounds of untargeted species for every one pound of targeted uh, fish, targeted species? It's known as bykill. Um, did you know that global greenhouse emissions, cars, trucks, trains, boats, planes combined result in 13% of global greenhouse emissions while cattle alone brings in 18 percent all animal agriculture combined brings in 51 percent com com uh, compared to the 13 percent from all transportation combined all fo all the fossil fuels combined did you know methane gas from livestock is estimated to be 25 to 100 times more destructive than carbon dioxide from vehicles did you know that while palm oil is responsible for about 26 millions of acres, millions of acres of uh, being cleared, that livestock and their food crop is bringing in, uh, racking 136 million acres being cleared. Uh, did you know that 216,000 people are born every day, and that that means if we don't evolve, if we continue this way, that we're going to need 34,000 new acres of farmable land per day. Per day. Uh, did you know that feeding a person for one year on a vegan diet takes up about one-sixth of an acre of land? A vegetarian diet, about three times that much. The average U.S. diet, about 18 times as much as a vegan diet. Uh... Did you know that 37,000 pounds of vegetables can be produced on one and a half acres of land versus only 375 pounds of meat on the same amount of land? <clears throat> Did you know vegan diets produce half as much CO2 as an American omnivore diet? Um, <clears throat> it uses one eleventh of the fossil fuel, one thirteenth the amount of water, and one eighteenth the amount of land. This movie, like, it really makes you think about that expression, change the world. Like, people talk about you can't change the world. Um, for those people who like to use you can't change the world or you're not going to change the world, um, every day, apparently, you can save about 
1,100 gallons of water, 45 pounds of grain, 30 square feet of forest, the equivalent of 20 pounds of uh, CO2, and one animal's life by going vegan every day. So tell me more about how we can't change the world. Um, apparently, even grass-fed beef. Uh, watch out. You know, grass-fed beef. The U.S. currently devotes almost half of its land to animal agriculture. But if we were to switch over to grass-fed beef versus, you know, factory farming, which is, you know, better, a lot of us think, we would have to dedicate the entire United States, all of Central America, halfway into South America, and well into Canada just to satisfy the U.S.'s demand for meat. And that, that, that doesn't take into consideration that not all land is farmable. And we would have to convert all mountain ranges, ancient forests, national parks, every and every city just to make room for grazing cows. So maybe skip the grass-fed burger next time. I don't know. You know, that, that's, that's something for you to think about. Um, did you know... Did you know that one gallon of milk takes upwards of 1,000 gallons of water to produce? That's not just talking about the amount of water the animal drinks. You know, it's it's taken into consideration that they drink water-intensive foods. Um, did you know raising animals for food consumes one-third of all the planet's fresh water? That it occupies 45%, up to 45% of all the Earth's land and is responsible for up to 91% of Amazon forest destruction. Did you know it's also the leading cause of species extinction of ocean dead zones, habitat destruction? Did you know in 1812, there were about 1 billion humans on Earth? 100 years later, by 1912, about 1 1.5 billion. Fast forward another 100 years, by 2012, that number hit 7 billion, while the number of animals we raised ballooned to now 70 billion this i'm looking at nine zeros 70 billion animals that we raise did you know the human population consumes about 5.2 billion uh, billion gallons of water and about 21 billion pounds of food every day that's the human uh, species the human population while the world's 1.5 billion cows alone drink 45 billion gallons of water every day and eat 135 billion pounds of food every day. That's nine zeros every day. Every day, the, anim the cows alone versus the entire human species, 135 billion to 21 billion. <laughs> Did you know that water usage, uh, speaking of water usage, did you know that hydraulic fracking uses about 100 billion gallons of water per year versus animal agriculture just in the U.S. equals 34 trillion gallons per year, while the methane emission from both industries are about the same, apparently. Did you know that more about uh, the water footprint did you know that it takes about 666 gallons of water to produce one quarter pound burger? Um, I didn't. I didn't. And this is the kind of stuff that you find out when listening to people who you don't see on mainstream news talk about, you know, all the effects of, you know, animal agriculture and our consumption of meat, eggs and dairy, not just like vegans are good meat eaters are bad or who's right and who's wrong we're not talking about who's right who's wrong we're talking about what's right you know name one human who doesn't depend on the the environment being in tip-top shape name one person who doesn't depend on clean air clean land you know food water education that that affects everybody and and the amount of waste what it costs we could be feeding apparently like i hear 10 billion people with the amount of food that we produce, um, we could be feeling, feeding ten, and that's that's doing things this way. Fuck! If you put in the frescoes, you know, circular cities, man, get the fuck out of here. Um, we're gonna move forward with the with the with the episode five. Again, the topic is why vegan, or why not vegan? Any way you want to look at it. Uh, we're gonna move to this uh, animal liberation activist Gary Yurofsky. Y o u r o f s k y. Gary G a r y. <laughs> He makes a lot of good points. You know, I don't agree with everything he says, and I don't, you know, like dudes' mannerisms all the time, but he makes a lot of excellent points. 
Um, he talks about in an interview, it's not your stake, that it's the body of a living, feeling animal who wants to be free, who doesn't want to suffer or die or be eaten, and animals who cry as they watch their babies stolen from them. You know, he talks about, you know, when people make the comparison, like, well, eating meat is natural, it happens in nature, you know, one animal eats another animal, this bird eats this, you know, insect this croc eats this, you know, whatever, this lion, we're not lions, we're not wolves, we're not early humans, you know, going back to like, how we started eating meat, the the theory, you know, Homo habilis, uh, which is an extinct species of upright East African uh, hominid having some advanced human-like characteristics, you know, we're not early human, we're not, or we're not modern or early Eskimos or island people who live secluded from most of the world. And those comparisons are invalid. You know, we're not them. Unless you throw into the, well, you know, this eats meat in nature. Unless you throw into that all the other behaviors and mannerisms of that species, whether it be ass sniffing, sleeping outdoors and naked, no cell phones and Wegmans, etc. You know, um, besides, carnivores' foods come out quicker. They have 10 times the hydraulic... Hydro- hydrochloric acid to break down meat uh, and i hear humans don't uh, don't have a ph balance or enzymes to do to do so uh, resulting in diseases like heart disease heart attacks strokes diabetes high blood pressure high cholesterol obesity so we're not talking about vegans all right we're talking about people who are sick we're talking about there are hospitals full of sick people with all these conditions and you know ask yourself how many you think in their diet regularly have meat, eggs, and dairy. Ask yourself if there are hospitals full of sick vegans, if there are hospitals you know, full of patients who ate too many fruits and vegetables. Have you ever heard of it? Have you ever seen it? Have you ever told a, you know, heard somebody telling you that their doctor recommended they cut back on fruits and vegetables? I've heard I need to cut back on red meat. I need to cut back on salt. I need to cut back on sugar. I've heard those things. I need to cut back on my cheese. You know, milk's not doing me. I've heard those things. I've never heard anybody talk about my doctor said I need to cut back on fruits and vegetables. Um, you know, so this dude, Gary Urofsky, he, um, he's, he was, he's kind of unpopular with some people because of the comparisons he makes. He calls, you know, the, what happens to animals the longest running holocaust. He said things like, you know, bad things should happen to bad people, like rape should happen to rapists, etc. So he, you know, he, he's he's pissed some people off, you know, which of us have not, you know, who of us have not. Um, but he makes a good point about, you know, we're not lions, we're not any of those, any, you know, species or, you know, early forms of human. Um, according to Gary, he says that jaws that move up and down indicate, you know, a carnivore, while jaws that, jaws that grind left and right and chew indicate herbivore you know, look into it. He says if you put a two year old in a crib with a bunny and rabbit with a bunny rabbit and an apple, and I've heard this comparison on another um, you know, video I saw called hundred one reasons to go vegan. Put a two year old or a baby in a crib with a bunny rabbit and an apple. Who imagines the child will play with the apple and start, you know, eating the rabbit, just chewing on its ear and shit. Um, he says, you know, he's big on language. He, the euphemisms that we use, we say leather when it's cow skin. We say bacon and not pig flesh. You know, we're, it, and that matters because when you think, it, you know, it might make you uncomfortable to say that. Like, you know, well, that's just not a nice way of talking. It may not be, but, you know, it's not nice talking versus like you're going to die and we're going to eat you. Like there, there, there's cruelty going all across the board. Maybe this is not the most polite way to talk. But this is not the most polite thing or ethical thing to be, you know, calling food either. He says the biggest holocaust, again, that the biggest holocaust that has ever happened is the animal holocaust. Because it it went on before the Jewish holocaust, during, and long after. And that upsets people when he uses that word holocaust. Um, And that it happened, you know, like I said, over a longer period of time than the holocaust we learn about in school or, you know, on the internet. He says that if you remove the animals and insert Jews, that you've recreated Auschwitz. That you have a building that exists to dismantle and torment and torture innocent beings. Um, that it's no different and it shouldn't be considered different. Um, he says that injustice cannot live forever and that the whole world will one day become vegan. I don't think it's that simple. Um, and I don't agree that a person who doesn't kill or support the killing of animals is better than a person who does. You know, what do you mean by better? Better at cooking, better at clarifying the meaning of their words. 
This is a guy who at the end of a video where he pissed where he was pissed from years of people saying that he condones rape after saying he wished rapists get raped, murders get murdered, etc. Talking to the camera, essentially no one like, huh? What's that? I didn't think so, you know, like as usual, I win, checkmate, fuck you. And like that's Gary Yurovsky, like he was just screaming at the camera, like <laughs> So he's a man of many great points, like most people he may have a lot of great points, but we don't agree on many things. We disagree. But you should hear his take on Hitler. You know, homie did his research. So what he's what he talked about was like you need to you need to ask yourself. There's so much more to what you know, like the, the more you study, the more you learn, the more you realize how much you don't know and how much more you need to update yourself. So that's what this is about. You know, episode five is not about, you know, I'm going to see how many people I can convert to vegan. It's about asking questions that don't get brought up usually, like having a conversation in a different way. Um, Gary, last couple points about Gary Yarovsky. You know, you can look into his videos. He talks for over an hour. You know, I'm just mentioning a couple points briefly. Um, he asks, are you aware that if humans were removed from the planet that it would benefit every living thing that exists and that if bees and ants die off that the whole system will collapse and that humans are the least special and most arrogant i tend to agree with that strongly in a lot of ways lastly he says put yourself in the animal's position you know fuck, fuck who says it put yourself in the animal's position uh we'll conclude with gary here you know he says that imagine you were raped uh, to impregnate, you gave birth. The baby was stolen and fattened up with soy, wheat, oats, corn, put on a concentration camp truck, sent to a slaughterhouse, hung upside down, fully conscious in front of all her species, screaming, terrified, knife and throat cut into pieces. You know, put yourself in the animal's shoes. You know, why do we consider that normal or acceptable? <laughs> Moving on, I know this, uh, this podcast is going to run a little long, longer than a half hour than my usual ones, but... It's just a topic we're going to have one time and a lot to think about, a lot for you to consider. So put a pause in it if you need to and come back to it. We're going to talk about health uh, right about now. But uh, anyways, this is episode five of the study. Um, I appreciate everybody joining us. Uh, we're going to move to the topic of health and what really runs in your family. Like people say things like, and again, I'm not taking sides. I'm not saying one way or the other, but you hear people say things like, you know, diabetes and high cholesterol and heart attacks run in my family. Um, and if you look at the family's diet over the generations, another thing that runs in the diet that runs in the family is a meat, dairy, and egg diet. High consumptions, you know, low quality foods, animals that you know are stressed, and that stress is in their 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 DNA and their body. Um, you never hear, like I said, you never hear of a person getting a heart attack, for example, or cancer or diabetes as a result of eating too many vegetables and fruits. You do hear of hospitals full of sick meat, egg, and dairy consumers whose doctors recommended them cutting back on things like fried foods, you know, things like that. Not carrots, tomatoes, or pomegranates. Um, consider that no one would drop, this, this is, you know, not to gross anybody out, I hope you're not eating, but consider that no one would drop an egg in a toilet with shit in it, even if it was their own shit, then pull the egg out, shell intact, and cook it and eat it. I don't, I can't imagine anyone that I, like, that alone, you just pictured it. Yet, eggs come out, would have come out of the one and only hole that chicken, that hens have, which is uh, shared by fecal matter, vaginal secretions, urine, and of course, a hen's once a month unfertilized egg, or as we call them, eggs. Um, what is it called when a woman discharge, discharges an unfertilized egg? It's called the period, right? So you've made the connection there. The menstruation cycle discharge of a hen. Uh, James Wildman uh, said this. He's of the Animal Rights Foundation of Florida. He says, I'm not going to eat a woman's period, just like why should I have a hen period? There's no need to eat any period from any living being. It's disgusting, and we should call it what it is. Um, we'll get to a little bit more about his presentation later. Um, just like, it, it, you know, it, it, we have to call things what they are. Um, you know, you can feel about it how you want, but don't use, don't sugarcoat things. You know, as honey is the regurgitated nectar produced by bees for bees, you know, and bee vomit tastes amazing. You know, honey is bee vomit, but it fucking tastes great. That's one of my exceptions to us. I occasionally have honey, uh, but you can't now unlearn what it is. He also says that the only reason we're drinking cow's milk right now is, uh, which is high in cholesterol and has no fiber versus plant milk that's high in fiber and has no cholesterol. 
The only reason we drink cow's milk is because somewhere a calf isn't. Um, so something to think about. Um, speaking of health, what are your thoughts on fish being labeled as unfit for consumption by pregnant women due to high risk for mercury contamination? What do you think? You know, doctors recommend people cut back on drugs, on cigarettes, on alcohol when they're pregnant, and also fish. Like, if it's not fit for a pregnant woman and can do that kind of damage, why is it fit for anybody, right? So, ask why is anyone uh, risking themselves to this by consuming flesh that might contain mercury? Um, speaking of James Wildman, we're going to expand on him just a little bit before we get to the end. Um, Again, thanks everybody for joining me. Uh, James Wildman, again, of the Animal Rights Foundation of Florida, he put a great presentation together called 101 Reasons to Go Vegan. Um, here's some quick points on that presentation. Apparently, 300 animals per second um, are killed by the justification of the story of what we are, you know, what's pounded into our heads since the time we're children that you have to eat meat to get protein that you need to drink cow's milk to get strong bones all these stories that are put into our heads that that's why that results in a 300 animals per second being killed he says that the story justifies the action and the happy cows on the packaging sell the sell the you know the, what's really happening um he he asks why should it be kept a secret we should know what we're a part of he asks, do we find it acceptable to cause harm to an animal? Um, I guess it depends on the animal in many cases, right? Dog, you call 911. Pig, you call it bacon. Um, he says, we all want to live and avoid pain. I can agree with that. I think most people can agree to that. You know, he mentioned that we root for Babe and Nemo and the chickens and chicken run, etc., but not in the real world. He asks, how many people would want to drink woman's breast milk? He asks, if cow's milk was meant for a calf, biologically meant for a calf, why would it be necessary for humans to drink? Um, it's no more necessary than dog, monkey, elephant, or pig milk. Biologically, no different. Mm. He also brought up a point that if you're going to take the milk from any animal and consume it, doesn't it make more sense to be drinking chimpanzee milk? Because if you think about it, we share 98% DNA. <laughs> So if you're going to take an animal, I'm just saying, I, I can't argue with that. It's more logical than cow's milk if you're going to drink animal milk. Um, the cow meat that you eat, apparently, <coughs> comes from cows that are grown large, but cows who drink no cow's milk. So how the fuck are they getting so big without their mother's milk? Hormones, steroids, not something you pasteurize out of the milk. How do you keep animals healthy in factory farm conditions? Antibiotics. Um... I learned apparently 70% of antibiotics produced in the United States go to animals. And we have sick humans dying because they're taking antibiotics that don't work anymore. And I wonder why they don't work anymore when the meat they ate for years was pumped with antibiotics and more. Um, I learned that all mammals have an enzyme called lactase that breaks down the sugar known as lactose. And as we mature, we lose that enzyme. So it's normal <clears throat> to not drink milk after infancy. Um, that's why 75% apparently of the human population is lactose intolerant. Um, a question is presented, who knows best, your body and what it tries to tell you when you consume this stuff or the dairy industry who's, you know, they're, they depend on the profit, the consumption, the endless and cyclical consumption. Of course they want you to buy it, you know, so who knows best, you know, the, your own body, your own reason or the dairy industry that keeps perpetuating that it's safe, you know, who runs a massive propaganda campaign and PR campaigns to push their narrative. You know, who are you going to trust with your kids' health? Uh, speaking of your kids, the number one cause of food allergens among infants and children. Guess what it is? Cow's milk, according to the American Gastroenterological Association. I just fucked that word up. Uh, countries apparently, uh, countries that drink the most milk, numero uno, USA, followed by England, Sweden, and then Finland. Countries that have the highest rate of osteoporosis, numero uno, USA, followed by England, Sweden, Finland. No shit. Go figure. Go figure. Go figure that they're in the same order too. Wow. Um, during the presentation... Uh, it's brought up that milk has something in it called casomorphine. 
that makes it addictive because apparently it's supposed it's supposed to be addictive breast milk apparently is supposed to be addictive to make you want it more because that's the most important growth of your life and you need it as much as you can um final note again the dude's name uh from the the animal rights foundation of florida is james wildman the presentation is 101 reasons to go vegan um he says when it comes to diet we're the dumbest species um that yeah yeah pretty much so anyways this has been um this has been fun right this has been fun like i'm an asshole or you know vegans are assholes or meat eaters are assholes we're all assholes we're all complicit in this shit that's been going on long since before we were born salute to all my people for not getting frustrated and sticking with me to the end of the podcast yeah. you know you have to remind yourself that whether you're vegan uh transitioning never gonna go vegan whatever uh, i was talking with somebody the other day a really smart intelligent woman she said you know the the vegan thing is probably never gonna happen completely in my house and i'm like is it never gonna happen or or you know under what conditions would it not happen you know let's say stores started shifting what they what they stock if they got 80 percent vegan options you know what and i'm talking about the transition foods the vegan dogs vegan burgers vegan cheeses vegan all those things um not to mention you know the 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 grains and seeds and nuts and uh, beans and uh, legumes and and whole wheats and fruits and vegetables that that essential not to mention that but if if every store if every giant and wegmans and walmart and wherever you shop at sold vast amounts of vegan options that it'll never happen in my house might shift a little bit because the conditions that create the it'll never happen in the first place you know they matter so you have to talk about the environment you know so um to all my non-vegan friends you know again i'm not vegan so to all my non-vegan friends you know don't take this shit like it's uh you know something is wrong with you something is fucked up about the culture something is fucked up about the way we do things um and people often ask what's your excuse What's your excuse as a meat eater? You know, I know personally I have my reasons like family get togethers and uh, vegetarian burgers, occasional honey. There's some shit called Todi that I like from Bolivia. T-O-D-D-Y. All my fucking Cochabambinos, they know about Todi. It's made with skim milk. All these things for the time being, who knows what the future holds for me. I'd like to think that as I progress uh, with this, that the result will be that I'll eat more and more vegan foods and meals consistently um and as little meat egg and dairy as possible while continuously updating and upgrading the diversity of foods in my home and in my body um eventually leaning to maybe like 99 point something to whatever you know make the exception sometimes um but i know that the environment matters you know in the places where i go to where like you go to it's not it's like that one little section so you don't have an abundance of vegan options uh but i know that there are things that i would say i'm not quite ready to give up that's what they are um Last word that nobody likes to mention is uh, when they say, what's your excuse for rape? Um, you know, that's that's a that's a tough word to swallow. That's why I saved it for the end. You know, we're going to cut out. But there's no way around it. Rape is rape. Even if a woman isn't a cow or a pig or a chicken. Uh, rape is rape. Kidnapping is kidnapping. No matter the species, torture is torture. So we can't really say that we're against rape, uh, kidnapping, torture, unless we specify which species rape, kidnapping, and torture we're okay with and which we're not. Think about it. We can't say we're against it all across the board because it doesn't only apply to humans. It applies to other animals, and you have to take it into consideration. Um, I'm all for the murder of mosquitoes. Fuck them. They got to go. Um, I say I like movies, but some movies suck. So instead, I say it depends on the movie. I like some uh same with food i like some foods you know you can't be too general you want to eat octopus soup or you craving some rocky mountain mountain oysters between your cheeks or who's hungry for spiders or duck fetus or monkey brains you know so you can't even say i like food you gotta say it depends on which foods um <clears throat> so i'll say it depends on it. it always depends on same with books people technology same with sexual positions it depends on you know i don't just like them all across the board generalizing is unacceptable for any human being in 2016 because there's simply too much goddamn information that is too easily accessible for this dumb shit to continue with lack of information like having a, an opinion but no information you know you want to defend eating meat that's cool you want to def- you want to be a vegan asshole fine you know it's your world 
You want to be informed and have complex thought to arrive at basic level com uh, compassion and adjust your moral compass so that your conscience is a little bit more clear about the options and choices you make and have and the impact that your choices make and have. You know, good luck to you all. This has been episode five of the study. Um, again, go to darknightrecords.com, download all previous episodes of the study, and I'll see you all back in episode six. Peace.